Hi, this is Colin Brown, and you're watching Front End Dev Tips. So today, what, what I'd like to go over is a little tool called Laravel Elixir. So Laravel Elixir is a package that is packaged with uh, a, a PHP framework called Laravel. But it turns out you can use Laravel Elixir outside of a Laravel app. You can just run static sites uh, running um, without PHP. So yeah, by default, you have to um, run a Laravel app. And what Laravel Elixir will do is kind of gives you a nice interface API into Gulp. Gulp. So basically, Laravel Elixir is a wrapper around uh, the Gulp uh, toolset where you can compile less and SAS and stylus, uh, create generate source maps, minification for production, you name it. So it comes bundled with, no, I take that back. It's not bundled. These are actual plugins that you need to download uh, separately, but um, so you can use, you can use Webpack, Rollup. Um, I think you can even use browser, Browserify. So um, let's, let's uh, get started. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a new project folder, just plain old folder, and I'm going to call it uh, a Laravel Elixir. I'm sorry, or Elixir demo. And then just CD into that folder. And then what I want to do is I want to do an npm init to create a package.json file. Let me just take all the defaults. Uh, and then now let's open it up in our IDE. Okay, you can see here I'm, I'm in uh, my uh, Atom IDE and we have our package.json. And there's a couple things that I wanna set up here just to help us get, get going. I'm gonna do uh, gulp here and I'm gonna type in gulp. I'll tell you why I'm doing this uh, just in a second here. And I'm gonna do serve and this would be HTTP server. Now, so let's install Laravel Elixir. Um, what comes packaged with Laravel uh, 5.3 is Laravel Elixir 6.00 um, release Canada uh, 11. Um, and if you were to d install Laravel Elixir without Laravel, uh, you're going to get the 5.0, uh, the, the latest um, uh, production version uh, of, of Laravel Elixir, and we don't want to use that today. We're going to use we're going to actually use the the um, the version that comes packaged with Laravel. There's a, it's a, it's a, a brand new stuff going on with it that I think is going to be more helpful. Uh, so let's let's install it. npm install Laravel Elixir, and then what we're going to want is version 6.0.0-11. And then we'll just do a save. So let's do npm install gulp and then save. You see my package JSON file getting updated. Now, if I run, what npm lets me do is set, set up my custom scripts. So if I type in npm run, and then the name of the script, in this case, we have a script called gulp. I can call this whatever. I can call this hello, or let's call it uh, build, build. And, uh, and, you, you, and then you say npm run build like that. And it will run, it'll run gulp within your, your local node modules folder rather than from the global uh, setup. So this isn't going to work, but you'll see it's missing uh, missing um, missing script. Maybe oh, I didn't save it. So you can see uh, no gulp file found. So let's do that. Let's create our gulp file. Gulp file.js and 
it's with Laravel Elixir, you can, it's really, really easy to get started. So first thing I want to do is create a, uh, I'm going to import the Laravel Elixir library. As a require, and then Laravel Elixir. Then we run, run Elixir. Elixir, and that's just a function that takes a callback function, and the argument that gets returned in the callback is mix. And mix with mix, you get all of these things that you can do with that you want to do. So SAS, Webpack, Rollup, scripts, whatever. So we're right now we're just gonna I'm gonna show you how to, to compile SAS files, and then in, in a um, later video. Uh, I'll show you how to do uh, webpack or roll up and some of the other stuff for JavaScript. So mix.sass and then app.sass. I like sass over scss, so we're going to use sass. Um, oh, I just have a linter in my in my file here. So now a word about conventions. So the reason why I like Laravel Elixir is that it has built-in conventions, so I don't have to spend time thinking about it. I don't have to set up, okay, uh, you know, look, listen or look for a file called source and then SAS and, and you set up my source directory and then my, my output directory. Built into Elixir or Laravel Elixir is um, certain folder conventions that you're gonna use um, just out of the box. Now there are ways to override those, but uh, out of the box you can just use their defaults. Now the default structure uh, to run these to run these functions is I'll show you that here. So we, we'll create a folder called resources, resources, and then um, assets. This is a little bit verbose. Um, it's tip. It's this is the default because that's how Laravel applications, the PHP application itself, um, uses uh, front-end assets. So it's a kind of verbose, but um, even for uh, for these little front-end applications that we're not using Laravel with, it's fine for just as a default. But again, you can override those um, and set these uh, any, any way you want. So we're going to create a s assets and then a SAS folder assets, SAS, and then in here, we're gonna create an app.sass file. So I'm just, uh, this is not for you, but uh, for me, I, in my Atom uh, IDE, I uh, have SAS linting turned on, so um, I have to, I have to uh, and if I wanna get rid of these warnings, um, I need to have this little SAS lint.yml file so uh, we'll just do that really quick. Sasslint.yml, and I'll just paste in what I've had from other projects. Now this should now the warnings go away. Sorry about that. So really quick, we're gonna uh, we're just gonna write some sass, and I'll do background color. Let's just do red for now. Now, this should compile if I type in gulp here. Actually, I, uh, if I type in, if I type in npm, I do have gulp running globally, but you can run it locally if, you, if by typing in, oh, sorry, we call it build. So npm run build. So what that did is it created a public folder. This is going to be our output folder, and then a CSS, and then app.css. You can see that it got compiled from SAS to uh, CSS. Pretty nice. So the next step is to use a, a function called browser sync. Browser sync, if you're not familiar, is just a uh, tool that lets you uh, that listens for changes as part of a watch setup and uh, up refreshes your browser uh, every time you make changes. So in order to use browser sync, 
um, you actually have to set up a local server. Now, typically with a Laravel application, this is not something I have to ever think about because with Laravel, you, you, you get a, a server out of the box, um, a little local server for development. Just, just, just it, comes with, it comes with it. But since we're not using Laravel, what I'd have to do is I have to use a tool called uh, HTTP that I like to use for just simple static sites. I use a tool called HTTP server. You can quickly just do a uh, NPM. It's on NPM. So just do uh, HTTP server if you're looking for it. NPM. There it is on NPM. You can install it globally, but I, like I said, I just for this demo, I'm just going to install it. I installed it locally, and uh, and that way I can just run it through this npm script. We're going to type in npm run serve, and then it's just going to run this this uh, this command. So let's get it installed locally. npm install. Oops. Value there, and then we'll just save it to our package JSON. There it is. Now it's in our node modules folder. So now if I run npm run serve, we're going to get a little local host on port 8080. So let's try that. Local host port 8080. And there's our background, ugly background. And uh, so let's open up a new tab. Now we're going to run. Now we're going to run Gulp. Uh, Gulp Watch in order to r have uh, browser sync running in the background. So we have to do that in a new tab. So now all we have to do is run Gulp or npm run build watch. npm run. So npm run build and then watch, which is just going to run the gulp command and then plus the watch command. So this shouldn't work, and I'll show you why. So anytime you're running, with the exception of uh, running SAS and some of these other things, browser sync and a couple other of these functions that come with Elixir are actually plugins that need to be downloaded uh, separately. So with Browser Sync, um, what's nice is uh, Laravel Elixir actually gives you a pretty good warning and then tells you exactly what you need to do in order to get it installed. So let's just follow their lead and uh, do it. So we need, we need to download Laravel Elixir Browser Sync official. So we'll do that. Uh, that should be it. So the other thing we need to do is write, uh, add these little uh, this option here for the proxy because it, what it does is it creates its own local host server on port 3000. And so what you need you need to point it to the actual server that is is running on 8080. And so the requests go through there as a proxy. So we'll type in proxy and then localhost 8080. Now, let's just close this. And now once now we can run gulp, or I'm sorry, npm run build, and then watch. We're, what we're missing now is just an index.html file that we can load our CSS file in. So let's just create that file, index.html, and then HTML, head, uh, title, demo, and then link, and we'll do CSS, app.css, and uh, don't need any of this other junk for this, and then body uh, h1 hello so that should give us our index page so now when we make 
changes, browsers, browser sync is going to watch for those changes and then refresh your, your browser. So let's just change the color here to like a gray, save it, and now you can see the uh, page is refreshed. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, the next video I'd like to go over um, some JavaScript stuff using uh, Rollup, uh, Browserify, or um, even Webpack. We'll go over some of those things. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you uh, enjoyed this and got some good use out of it. And uh, Thank you. Next time.